my dog Casey. Today, I'd like to talk about Quasi, a new quantum programming language for specified quantum computations. I created this programming language for my recent research project. The realization of universal quantum computers is coming in the near future. These quantum computers will require different types of programming languages than the ones we use today. This is why I invented Quasi. Some of you may be wondering, what are quantum computers and why are they needed? A quantum computer uses the properties of quantum mechanics. This is different than classical computers, which we are all familiar with today, which utilize the properties of classical mechanics and Boolean logic. In the future, quantum computers could be used to efficiently tackle complex problems, many of which are beyond the scope of classical computers. Some areas include image processing, drug discovery, cybersecurity, finance, logistics, weather modeling, genetic analysis, and others. Let's talk more about quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is concerned with the behavior of particles at the quantum level, which differs from that of matter at the macroscopic level. Two key characteristics are superposition and entanglement. In superposition, a quantum particle can be in multiple states at the same time until measured. Examples include photons and their polarization, electrons and their spin, etc. Another key characteristic is entanglement. In entanglement, quantum particles can be linked together in such a way that a measurement of one will determine the possible quantum states of the others. Superposition is an unusual concept that we don't see in the macroscopic world. It only applies at the quantum level. So let's illustrate this concept with Casey. For this demonstration, let's pretend that Casey is a quantum particle and that she has two quantum states. Sitting or standing. Let's perform an experiment on our quantum particle. We'll put her in superposition of both states in this box without taking any measurements. While a quantum particle is in superposition, it is in multiple states at the same time. In our illustration, Casey is in both the sitting and standing states simultaneously. When a measurement is taken of a quantum particle in superposition, it will leave superposition and collapse into one state. Now let's take a measurement. We'll make an observation during which she will collapse into one of her two quantum states. Aha! She is in the sitting state! Quantum computing is an emerging field which uses new types of hardware and methods of computation based on quantum mechanics. Quantum computing makes use of new algorithms which take advantage of quantum behavior to give you significantly faster computations. This makes larger scale, more complex problems addressable. Using superposition, one can simultaneously represent all possible input combinations. So with n inputs, one can process 2 to the n combinations in parallel. At the quantum level, constructive interference is used to increase the probability of a correct result, and destructive interference is used to lessen the probability of incorrect results upon measurement. General purpose universal quantum computers are coming in the future. Thus, there is a need for a general means of specifying and controlling quantum computers in their computations. I designed Quasi to meet this need. Before we go into detail, let's give an overview of how all the pieces fit together. Quantum algorithms are implemented by quantum circuits, which are comprised of quantum gates, which act upon quantum bits, or qubits. Quantum algorithms are designed to evolve the quantum state of a system, so that when a measurement is taken, the probability of the correct result is increased, and the probability of incorrect results are decreased. Some algorithms give results with certainty, and others give results with probabilities. Quantum algorithms are an area of active research. Areas of research include factoring, searching, and solving systems of linear equations. The Deutsch algorithm was the first to show a definite advantage of quantum computing over classical computing. There is a collection of quantum algorithms at the Quantum Zoo on NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Recall that quantum algorithms are implemented by quantum circuits. The quantum circuit model provides an abstraction of quantum computations. It operates at the level of gates and qubits and is independent of any particular physical implementation. A quantum circuit specifies a sequence of unitary operations and measurements which are applied to a multi-qubit state. 
It consists of qubit inputs combined with quantum circuit operations, such as a no-op gate, a quantum gate, or a measurement. A quantum circuit is organized in stages with time progressing from left to right. Once measured, a qubit loses its superposition and collapses to one state or the other. As mentioned before, quantum algorithms are realized by quantum circuits. Classical computing uses a set of logic gates that perform Boolean operations on bits, such as AND, OR, NOT, and others. These gates transform inputs into outputs in a deterministic fashion. Quantum computing uses a set of gates that perform quantum operations on qubits. These gates manipulate arbitrary superpositions of computational basis states. Quantum gates are mathematically represented as unitary matrices, where row indices correspond to inputs and column indices correspond to outputs. The characteristics of a unitary matrix are its inverse equals its conjugate transpose, both its inverse and its conjugate transpose are unitary. For a fixed column, the sum of the squares of the row absolute values equals 1, and for a fixed row, the sum of the squares of the column absolute values equals 1. Here is a sampling of some quantum gates. The Hadamard, the poly X, the poly Y, the poly Z, the phase shift, and others. Note that the matrix entries may include complex numbers. I will cover these gates in more detail in a later video. So far, we've discussed quantum algorithms, which are implemented by quantum circuits, which are comprised of quantum gates. These quantum gates operate on quantum bits, or qubits. A qubit is analogous to a bit in classical computing. A qubit is expressed using the Dirac notation, or the Bra-Ket notation. A ket represents a column vector of complex numbers, and a bra represents a row vector of complex numbers. A qubit state space includes two computational basis states, a logical zero, or a logical one. A qubit is represented as alpha times ket zero plus beta times ket one, where alpha and beta are complex numbers. This is a useful notation for representing superpositions. The absolute value of alpha squared equals the probability of measuring ket zero, and the absolute value of beta squared equals the probability of measuring ket one. Alpha and beta are also known as amplitudes of a quantum wave function. Here is an example of qubit superposition. A qubit can be an equal superposition. In this example, the absolute value of alpha squared equals one half, and the absolute value of beta squared equals one half, so there is an equal probability of ket zero and ket one. A qubit can also be an unequal superposition. In this example, the absolute value of alpha squared is three fourths, and the absolute value of beta squared is one fourth so there is an unequal probability of ket zero and ket one. While universal quantum computers are not generally available, researchers have developed an abstract model for how they would operate. This model is known as the quantum circuit model. The quantum circuit abstracts away the details of exactly how the quantum operations will be implemented on different physical devices and instead focuses on the essential operations and capabilities of quantum computing in terms of qubits and quantum gates. Quasi is designed to write to this abstract quantum circuit model interface. This quantum circuit model is independent of differing physical implementations of quantum computers. When universal quantum computers become available, different companies will likely have differing instruction sets for implementing quantum circuits. The quantum circuit representation of a quantum computer would need to be translated into these different instruction sets. But this would not affect programs written in Quasi, which interface at the abstract quantum circuit model level. When universal quantum computers become available, they will likely work in conjunction with classical computers. This figure shows a mode of operation that is consistent with the quantum circuit model. The quantum computer works together with, but under the control of the classical computer. The classical computer is still able to perform regular classical operations and can send a description of needed quantum computations in the form of a quantum circuit to the quantum computer. The quantum computer performs the operations specified in the circuit and returns requested measurements to the classical computer. Prior 
to develop a quasi, I researched the literature and established a set of requirements for a quantum programming language such as quasi to fulfill. These are the requirements for quasi. Completeness. The language must support a set of quantum gates that is sufficient to express desired quantum circuits. Extensibility. The language must, number one, extend and interwork with the classical computing language, and number two, allow the user to define and use new quantum gates. Separability. The quantum and classical parts of the language should be separable. Expressivity. The language should allow the user to operate not only at the detail gate level, but also at higher levels of abstraction, for example, the circuit level. Independence. The language must be independent of any physical manifestation of a quantum machine and suitable for use with a variety of future quantum computers. The language should operate at the quantum circuit level of abstraction, which is above and independent of differing physical implementations. Interactivity. The language should be able to create and modify quantum programs interactively and dynamically without a separate edit file, compile file, run program cycle. Let's take a look at Quasi's capabilities. Quasi is an acronym for my quantum computing elucidation extension. It meets the requirements specified previously and allows the user to specify desired quantum computations in terms of quantum circuits. In addition to meeting the aforementioned requirements, Quasi also offers these capabilities. It supports standard and custom gates. It validates that the custom gate matrix specification is unitary. It validates that qubits are not used in a quantum manner after measurement. It supports both gate level and circuit level operations. It can specify any stage of a circuit in any order. And it can also save and load prior circuits, add circuits together to build more complex circuits, and validate new circuits. Quasi provides an extension to the common Lisp language, adding over 30 new functions for creation and initialization, applying gates, higher level functions, and output functions. We'll learn more about these in a later video. In summary, We've discussed some basic principles of quantum mechanics and quantum computing, which included quantum algorithms, quantum circuits, quantum gates, and qubits. We also introduced my new quantum programming language called Quasi and gave an overview of its features. In a later video, I plan to discuss Quasi in more detail and illustrate how it can be used to implement quantum algorithms. I hope you enjoyed learning about Quasi, my new quantum programming language.